So today is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2017, and we have some great news. Philips Hue has released their extended HomeKit support, which means in addition to the lights, we're also going to get the motion sensors, as well as the dimming switch, the tap switch. This is great news. So let's check out what that looks like. So this is the older version of the Philips Hue app. And if I go into the HomeKit in Siri, you can see I've got lights. And obviously, lights have been exposed for a while with the Philips Hue 2.0 bridge. But what you don't see here is you don't see any accessories. So we're going to go over to the Apple App Store on our iOS device, this iPad. And you can see there's a new Philips Hue app, new logo, really nice. We're going to click on the update. And we're going to um, install this update and then see what these new accessories get exposed as and what the new functionality is. So if we click on the more button, you're going to see here, um, pause the video, zoom in. You can read all that's available here, but this basically says what I just told you. Accessories that are connected to your Philips Hue 2.0 bridge, this is the HomeKit bridge, will now be exposed directly into HomeKit. So here we are in the new Philips Hue app. You're going to see the first thing that happens is you're going to get this update button. As soon as you update the app, you're going to be asked to update the firmware on the Philips Hue 2.0 bridge, which is the HomeKit supported bridge. So through the beauty of video editing, I'm not going to make you guys wait through those couple of minutes. Um, get that done. You may also have to update the firmware of your accessories themselves. That's uh, totally dependent on your system. So now that we're here, we can click on the learn more button. And if you so choose, you can go through all of this um, information that's now available to you in the learn more section. There are a couple of videos here. You can see the uh, Dimmer setting up the tap or dimmer switch. Um, again, Philips has done a really great job of giving us a bunch of information, setting up the motion sensor from other apps, right? So these should now all be exposed in your other HomeKit accessible apps as well. You can turn on automatic updates. So in general, this is a good thing. I think Philips has done a great job here. Um, we're also going to go over into our HomeKit and accessories, and you can see now that all these new accessories are there. That entire accessories section wasn't even available before. So now we're going to make sure that we update to synchronize between the Philips Hue and the HomeKit app so that we can make sure that these are all exposed. So I'm going to click on that update button and there we go. So now we're over back on the Apple Home app and you should see you've got a bunch of more accessories here. Um, you can go into the details, you can see kind of what room they're in, all those kinds of things. So one of the things that, and I honestly had to poke around, I edited this out of the video because it would have been just me fumbling. Um, I found it a little hard to find these things. You know, I went looking, you know, I, I know that I've got these things in the master bedroom, but what I found is that wherever room you had the Philips Hue bridge in, that's where all of your accessories are now located, regardless of where they were tied to in the Philips Hue app. So this is normal. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go in and one by one, we're going to have to click on that tap under the device, click on details, go down, and you're going to have to look at the room and go, OK, front door sensor, well, that goes in the front door room. This is a one-time thing. Yeah, it's it's frustrating a little bit, to be honest, um, but it's a one-time thing, right? You would have had to have done this if you set up all these devices anyways. And imagine you would have to buy a whole bunch of new devices to get this kind of uh, functionality. So this is actually really, really, really cool. I'm incredibly impressed with Philips Hue. This is one of the, um, the the biggest criticisms I had of the Philips Hue is they didn't expose their light switches or their motion detectors. And their motion detectors are awesome. They're so fast. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to use these to trigger other events in my house. The other nice thing is you can see the room switch button. This is very close uh, to the Logitech switch button. You have four separate buttons that you can configure each one for an independent home kit action. This is awesome. I'm super, super happy about this. Um, now I'm not just a on or off button um, in the room. So definitely I can have those two, but I can also create two, those other, um, the dimmer buttons. This is going to be awesome. Super happy about this. You can see that some of my devices right now are not recognized. Uh, that's actually normal. Um, I've got a motion sensor that the battery ran dead in it, and I honestly wasn't using it for anything, so it's just up on the wall. And I'm going to go through the rest of these. I'm not going to make you watch this, and we'll get to the end. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the Philips Hue accessories and see how they get actually exposed within Apple HomeKit. The first one we're going to look at is the Philips dimmer switch. This is going to get exposed. Um, it's very similar to the Logitech pop button. 
we're going to be able to click on the details here and see that we've got multiple single press, multiple buttons. You've got up to four buttons. And when you click on that button, you can then activate any scene you want with that button. So there's quite a bit of flexibility here. The next one we're going to look at is the Philips Hue motion sensor. So the motion sensor, um, this is actually way more than I was expecting. I was expecting a motion sensor, which definitely we've got that. All right, we've got the ability um, as, as a straight motion sensor as any other, like the Elgato Eve motion sensor. But we've also got a light sensor, which is nice. So now you can do kind of time of day based on um, the lighting level automations. And the one I was not expecting is we actually got a temperature sensor here as well. 